was talking with this, a friend of mine who's an acupuncture and physical therapist, and he was talking about, uh, about this one area that gets trapped. It's most of people's pain and suffering around their shoulders. And so he was talking about, I said, well, what kind of movement could I do as warm-ups that would help people get you know, be, be freer in their dragon arms. And he showed me a couple that I wanted to, I'm really glad Stephanie and you were on because we can just play with this stuff. <laughs> it's a, some of it's about the way we go up. <clears throat> and so Stephanie, I was just showing Yeshi because she's got a dealy bopper. Uh, let's try it again. So come in at prayer arms with your elbows down. And then come in close with your hands and come in close with your elbows and come up above your head, keeping your, four, your upper arms near your ears. And then here, your elbows are still kind of forward. Let interlock your fingers and roll the wrists up and just let the elbows do what they need to do, but maybe not have them out. See if you can keep them straight. And then try the rolls. Is it good this time too, Yeshi? Better. Better, okay. What's the difference? It's the way you go up. So it's the way the t tendons and ligaments lay on top of each other after you've moved. You know, mm -hmm. if, if we go up with our elbows out, it, certain things happen in our shoulder joint. But if we come up with our elbows in and then roll open, there's a different kind of arrangement of the ligaments and tendons inside the shoulders. Wow. And more people have more access and more mobility when they've got a, yeah. an irritation. And it's, it's some friction involving some layers of muscles and tissues that he explained, but it was kind of over my head. I mean, I needed to see a model or something. And so um, he, he gave me three movements, which one was what he called the Hala movement. Uh, no, Hallelujah. Sorry, Hallelujah movement. Which I guess we could call the Hala movement if we wanted to. So let's try, let's try this. It's, it's you come together with your hands like yes, and up and around and back. So it's yes, up, keep the elbows in. Then once the elbows are up kind of beyond your ears, let them roll. I once had a shoulder thing and um, Somebody taught me how to brush my hair a different way. And it was all in the way my arm went up. Let's make this next one the last one. And um, I suppose we could have set the chi field stronger and been more chi, chi related with it, but was that okay? Another thing he gave, uh, gave me as a, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's going the right direction. Gave me as a um, idea to pass along is to go to a door jam and do kind of push-ups or planks. Can you see me? What, are you just passing into the door? Yeah, I'm holding my hands on each side of the door jam and then doing a little plank move or a little push-up kind of move. Against, against the side? Yeah, I'm holding my hands firm on the door jam and then, then taking the weight of my body in and pulling it back. And it, gets, it, gets, it strengthens this part. What's the problem? Okay. Well, put your heart energy into your hand and hold your one or the other, give it some love. And then if, if, if you've identified that as the problem, then Stephanie, I want you to listen into whether 
it's good to activate the problem by um, tiny bits getting stronger or whether it's um, better to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. But I, I think put but put some love on it now. So that so that your your body understands that that movement was done in order to support it in healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take one of your hands and and give it give it to yourself so that the the body understands that you know you didn't just push on it to make it suffer. You you pushed on it with the intention to bring long lasting health to it. How was it for you, Yeshi? That's pretty intense too. Okay. So maybe if you I mean, think into it, pray into it, and um maybe not taking your body weight so far forward. Yeah, just do a tiny bit. Just do a tiny bit. But it, it may we may have really pointed out a place where with with loving attention and cheerfulness we can um, cultivate more capacity or or you can decide to leave it alone but um, I want you to think into that and the third movement was it was listen to your watch and do a backstroke listen to your watch and do a backstroke <laughs> listen to your watch and do a backstroke So here we're getting a, a rotation of the shoulder without the elbow coming up above the shoulder. Let's try the other side. Are those working? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That feels good. So he said these are the healing exercises that he hands out all the time to people with, I guess you call it bursitis or whatever the, with shoulder dilemmas. And I was excited. I have a new friend. It's like I want to take him out to lunch or something. He's like, <laughs> he also teaches Qigong in a, another type of Qigong, probably medical Qigong, but in, a, in uh, not too far away, you know, well, half an hour drive, but another part of town. And it's like, oh. What was the first one? The, 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 the first one was hallelujah, hall, hallelujah, which is coming up in prayer hands, uh, but keeping the elbows in, and then rolling open. And the door jam, and then... Uh-huh. And then listen to your watch backstroke. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to see if these would help us with, and then I wanted to play with applying them to dragon arms. And Stephanie, I remember you reporting to me that when, I forget whether it's Zoo or Zhao or which teacher it was you were, you were practicing with, um, your dragon arms was easier. And one of the things that I picked up from one of the other teachers is an, it's a variation on dragon arms, but it's to keep it right in front of you and really work with the central column. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's play with having one hand right at our, our dantian. And, and taking it, I guess I'm going to stand up. But, and taking it, up the midline, close to our, close to our midline, close to our nose. And then when that palm is near the forehead, then start to rotate the palm around to face up and the elbows out. So you come up and then up and then rotate the fingertips back and around and then let it come down. Let's just try that. See if that is a movement that works. 
in your shoulders. And by working, I mean not causing acute distress. Um, and feels inside like it's moving towards more flexibility. Rising, palm near the forehead, heel of the hands near the forehead, fingertips then go back and around. And then we let the hand fall down and then we curl the fingertips in near the hips and rise back up. So it's the same movement pattern, it's just not all extended. It's held in close. And maybe you can feel, I hope you can feel, the rising chi in the central channel. If you're not thinking too much about your hand, you can come in there and feel the swelling up. Let's try the other hand. Up, fingertips roll back, comes down, fingertips roll in and forward. Up, out and back, around, down, and forward. So at first we kind of have our mind with our hand and that's where our attention energy is and that's where our chi is. And then if the pattern starts to work, then we can take our mind into the global, into the center column and the chi all around us and feel a descent and a, and a rising of the chi and feel more integrated with the Qigong nature of the movement. And let's make that on our last one for a moment. And just stand quietly. Have an inner smile that the two corners of your inner smile are up in your shoulder joints. Well, it's a big inner smile. It takes up your whole chest and it ends up in your shoulder joints. little shoulder rolls and we'll do that how is how is that for your does your mobility work with yeah keeping it in close yeah it was good mm -hmm. okay. let's play with the other side of that equation which i found the most energetically powerful is to play with the hand dropping right down the center line hmm. We can do our dragon arms, you know, rotating forward or, um, let me see, <laughs> that's forward. So we can also do it rotating in the other, other direction. We also do it, I mean, we meaning people I play with with this and YouTubes and things like that. I mean, it, it's taught that there's the outward, outward curling dragon, uh, double Tai Chi balls, and there's an inward curling double dragon. I mean, double Tai Chi balls. And then there's the alternating, where which I can get sometimes, where you're outward curling with one arm and inward curling with the other. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things to play with with it. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so Yeshi, let's try keeping, let's try another version with, um, um, with coming down. Let me see if I can get it organized inside myself. Um, okay, there it is. All right, so let's start with the hand above the forehead, the wrist above the forehead, and the fingertips pointing back. 
and then roll the fingertips out to the side and then forward and then drop the drop the palm right down the midline and then roll the fingertips into the hip and then around and let the spiral come up and then roll the fingertips back and forward and then let the descent come Roll the fingertips in, out to the side, and then spiral up. Fingertips back, forward, and descend. It's a little bit more like the old barber pole. If you want to impose an image into here. Does it help when I cue? Yeah. Okay. So my hands at my Dantian, my fingertips are pointing to my Dantian, palms up, my fingertips point back. And then, and then as I come out, I spiral up, keeping my elbow relatively close in, fingertips are back, and then to the side. And then I hold the ball and let it drop. Fingertips in, out to the side, spiral up, taking the fingertips back, over to the side, palm towards my face, and it descends down, down, down. Fingertips in the Dantian, out, spiraling up, over the top of the head, gathering the chi from above. By way, dropping down, down, down to Dantian. Gathering chi at Dantian, spiraling up. Fingertips back, gathering chi at by way. Palm inward, I mean, heel of the hand inward, down. In with the fingertips, out and around. Spiraling up, fingertips back over the head, around, and bringing that precious ball of chi down to the Dantian. Good. Let's take the other hand here at the Dantian, curl the fingertips in and back out as you come up. Over the top of the head, the fingertips are back, and then roll out to the side, and then the heel of the hand is close to the body as you come down. Fingertips in towards Dantian, around and out as you spiral up. Over the head, down, in, back around, diagonal across, fingertips back, around, and come down more or less straight down the center column, bringing the chi down to Dantian. Fingertips past the hips, go back and out, fingertips around and up the spiral staircase, back over the head, ooh, that's a good image, around and drop down the center pole, oh, I like that one. Okay, come around at the base of the spiral staircase, climb up the spiral staircase, gather chi at the top, slide down the pole in the middle. Go around the base, spiral up the spiral staircase, around the top, and come down the pole. Let's do the other arm a little bit more. Around the base, up the spiral staircase, over the top of the head, and down. In, around, up. It's 
Well, I hope you're relaxing enough to feel the heavenly chi descend down to the Dantian and then spiraling up and descending down. Your shoulders doing okay? Pretty good. Good. All right. Let's descend and hold on to our, and sit, stay centered in our dantian. Smiling again to both shoulders. Or if it's too hard to smile to two things at once, make one big smile that includes both shoulders. I want you to just take your mind. Take your mind into your shoulder blades and as if there was a, a bungee cord coming right through where your shoulder blades meet, I want you to just pull on both ends and open to each side. So we haven't done much with the torso, but we've opened through, we've opened outward to each side. I think what we're doing here is, we're, at least for me, I'm primarily sort of expanding my rib cage to each side. Um, I can also think about it from my shoulders too, and ask my shoulder, my collarbone to come separate a bit and move to each side. And then relax and let everything come back into its normal place. And open out with your breath. And let everything come back in gently. Don't collapse completely. Just feel a lachi movement here with an open and closed movement here from the outside edge of your shoulders out to each side. And feel how much space you actually can give your shoulders to move. This is, I, my intuition is that this is the real point of the direction to open our armpits. When the young teachers around the, for a long, long time, I've always said to them, open your armpits. And like there's an orange or an apple or a tennis ball or something underneath your armpit. Well, I was wondering why. And then I got it that what it's doing is activating some spaciousness in the shoulder joint. So I've been playing more with standing and just simply opening through my shoulder joints and then letting my arms be here. If I'm just hanging out standing and walk, get the notion to do a little practice while I'm standing. I'll, one thing I always do is I play with softening my knees. But the other thing I've started to do is Play with opening my shoulder joint. <clears throat> and you can think of it as your armpit. It doesn't matter, I don't think. It seems to work with my breathing. Mm -hmm. What about uh, not with the breathing? No, oh, I think it was really. Is that a, well, I think that. I think the teaching in Zen and Qigong about not focusing on the breathing in the beginning level is that we don't want our mind to get linked and attached to the breath and our mind to be doing a whole trip here. If we're, if, if we're naturally linked with our breath, but our mind is paying attention to the expansion and, and union of the energy through the shoulders, then it's natural. Okay. But we haven't sent our mind to the breath. We're keeping our mind here. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more the rib cage, 
you know, we have this capacity. And once, once I was in a training with Jude Henning, who's a nurse, and she talked about a joint that's right sort of in here somewhere and that gets activated with Chen Chi a lot. So I guess it must be like right there. And she's called it the happiness joint. She says when, when, when we're depressed, we're, we hunch in. Mm -hmm. And when, when we're happy, we, get, we often come back. And most, a lot of people get in a physical habit of hunching in because of computers or other things or depression. And then their body stays hunched in, even though they, they really have no reason to be sad or anything. They're just that their, their body's in that pattern. So activities like Chen Chi help people liberate that joint, get it unstuck and be happier. I think just opening and closing through the shoulder joint, just expanding and contracting does the same thing. And I know Chen Chi activates negatively for you, Yeshi, and I'm just looking for, uh, anyway, I'm just thinking around that diagonal. Ow. Does the opening and closing to the side, Yeshi, is that comfortable? That's good. I, I can do Chen Chi as long as I do it very mindfully and slowly. Mm -hmm. But if I start rushing it, it gets all tense. Yeah, and probably because some ligaments and tendons have gotten um, unor not organized the same way and they're frictioning on each other, maybe. I really resonate with this joint right here. What's that? I really resonate with that joint right here. The yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I really feel that. Yeah, and so I think it's. I don't know if it's exactly where Chief Wu is, but I mean, I, I love, I seem to feel really happy when I do this, you know, I mean, it feels good. So maybe that's somewhat close. So let's just shake out our shoulders for a minute. Whatever random movement feels good. Okay, so let's play with bicycling our bicycle bicycle pedaling our shoulders forward in an alternating way. So when we go to double dragon arms, we are inviting this cross crawl, this alternating sequencing that we know so well in our legs. And if we're a swimmer, we know this well. And let's take it backward. Softly. Are those comfortable? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're comfortable for you too, Yeshi? Okay, so let's let's take it a little deeper then. Let's this is the bicycle pedal, and then there's this axis. You know, there's the the connection that happens. Okay. And how does a bicycle work? Well, anyway, you can imagine a the connection either as a straight line or coming yeah probably let's do a straight something oh and, well, okay i'm exploring how to verbalize these things while i'm doing it um 
So I want your mind to be in not just the outside edge of your shoulders as you roll, but in the rod that's connecting them. Put Make an energetic pathway between them. It comes right through the center of your chest and keeps them at in opposition in good um, opposition so they're not rolling independently but they are rolling together they have to roll together because you've linked them up with this rod energy rod And take it the other way, link them together. One can't go forward without the other one going back. All right, coming still. Now let's try circles that go um, side to side. The infinity thing? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go there first. They'll go there second. First I'm gonna trust just, let's just try taking a, a parallel circle around in a side to side way. Keep them linked. Comfortable. Horizontal or a vertical movement? Um, vertical. Vertical. You're going forward and back, I think, Stephanie. Try what am I supposed to be doing? Side to side. Oh. It's, it's, what I'm doing now is playing with your mind map, stretching and cultivating your mind map to tell your shoulders to do something that's not normal. Yeah, the uh, bicycling was relatively easy because um, because that pattern is closer. This this pattern isn't as normal, so our mind needs to struggle a little bit to then go the other direction to do it, and that creates new neural pathways and helps us build that. mind shoulder connection which is also going to take a lot more chi into the shoulders softly soft little circles that have a rod in between them that are linked good that feels great does it? Good. I mean, we do shoulder rolls, which you know our pair. We can link our shoulders together and go forward and go back. We our mind can easily do that, and that's good. Let's try this one out. So now we're going to try <clears throat> with this rod. That's my infinity loop. Ran away. 
the infinity loop ran away. All right. So we're going to try wave arms now. I want you to close your eyes and have those two. Well, if you want to open your eyes and watch me, it's, it's, and that's easier. That's perfectly fine. I've got these little tickies on my shoulders, so maybe you can see what my shoulders are doing. Um, so I'm going to start rising with this arm, this shoulder. And when I start rising with this shoulder, this here has to descend. And then I'm going to take this one up. And so this one's going to circle in this way. And, and it's going to have a response over here. And they're connected. OK, I'm going to slow down. I was going too fast. So it's like the, my wrist is near is my shoulder. Now where my mind is with my shoulder. I guess these don't work. So wave arms are, would you call that lateral, side to side? Yeah. Yeah, lateral circles. They're lateral circles that are happening in alternation. And where our mind is attaching to the outward edge of each lateral circle. If that's too much mental, just let it all go. Good, and coming quiet. Okay, so, so dragon arms, is a vertical infinity loop that's also got more space inside of it. Okay. Up and around and down. If I just keep my mind in my shoulder joint, I'm making this shape that's like this, and then like this, and like this, and then like this. So the shoulder joint has is making this. I mean, this is the shoulder joint. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay, keep your mind in your shoulder joint now. Yes, you just keep your mind inside your shoulder joint, both of you. Let's just play with the shoulder joint and let the elbow and the hand do whatever they need to. But let's play with that circling, that infinity circling, just in the shoulder joint. Keep your elbow in as much as you can and see if all this loosening up doesn't help you. OK. 
Okay, I'm going to switch to my other one and I'll cue it if you want. Um, so my shoulder joint is coming in from the back and through and spiraling up to the back and then forward and around and down through. Uh, I guess it's hard to cue here in the shoulder, isn't it? I'm getting an image of a egg timer mm -hmm. and how you could you could roll up roll up a ball like a uh, in this spiral maybe or you could tape a line of this spiral Okay, and, now, and just to put an ending on this that takes us towards our goal, not that we need to be there today or anytime soon, but um, double dragon arms means that we have that rod again connected between so that as one shoulder and elbow and wrist have a rising and spiraling movement, the other shoulder and wrist has a parallel descending action. The link is there across the body and the mind can hold the entirety state of this bilateral cross crawl, spiraling up and down, much more complex than simple crawling. So I, I would encourage you to, um, so there's an incredible video of teacher way, YouTube of teacher way doing it online and, um, I think I have done some. I need to like post them though. Um, of myself doing it, if or just like dropping in and, and letting your mind sit quietly or let and let your mind play with that alternating elliptical spiraling and see if you can just relax, do one side, get the pattern. And, and then get the other pattern and just practice with seeing if your mind can hold the entirety of the complexity outside of your body movement. And that might be an interesting um, brain, brain juicer. I mean, I'm sure it would be to get that pattern going. Yeah, probably going to be a lot easier to do one at a one at a time. <laughs> I'm already off, but even even just playing like that, you know, see so see how it was easier for me to bring my hands right up near my brain, <laughs> and and see if I could do it with just my hands. Oh, there we go. I got it. See if you can do it with just your hands small, right up in the space of your head. Without needing to use a whole lot of shoulder joint. And if that, if the hands that high are activating your shoulder, um, um, bring them down because there's we're just playing with the mind map here and linking up to the physical body, but in a trying to find a simpler way. Now, sometimes I, I, I noticed too that I, I went pretty fast, and I think that sometimes it's easier to go fast with the double. 
Hmm. So let's. <laughs> I've got my yard worker out there goofing around, showing me what I'm doing. <laughs> um, let's take ourselves into into a quiet state, and I want to do one um, a simple um, qigong exercise that. from early in my life that um, balances the right and the left side and, and I think can bring us into just a state of equilibrium and, and help us digest what we've been doing on a more complex level. This is a much simpler kind of thing. So what we're going to do is bring what we're going to, okay, here's your central channel and then there's these side channels. And what we're playing with is the side channel. And we'll bring the hand up and let the energy rise right behind it and turn the palm over and bring the energy down through that side of our body. So it's a scoop here at the Dantian, up to the shoulder. You can love on your shoulders that have been doing so much and then bringing it back down. Okay. So one side's doing this and then the other side's um, working in, in op, I guess you'd call it opposition, but the, it's working the other side. An alternating way. And we quiet down and we go inward and close our eyes and see if we can be in this movement of up and down on our right and left sides of our body. Moving complementary to each other. Knees are soft, inner smiles active. One arm rising needs the other arm falling. descending hand needs the rising hand to do it. Let the descending hand come to the Dantian. Focus on the Dantian. Let's bring the hands down to each side. Do a little whole body lachi, just opening to each side and letting chi settle back in the tighter pattern gathering. Open the spaciousness all around you. Bringing the spaciousness deep inside.
Using your shoulder joints to open the hands. Spaciousness in the shoulder joints. Spaciousness expanding through the whole body. Uh, connecting deeply with Earth, doing our final lachis on behalf of the planet. All the pairs of shoulders all over the planet. Animals, people. Plants, all of us together. We dedicate our practice to openness and free flowing energy as we reach out into the world from our hearts, through our shoulders, into our hands, into our actions, with our mind, our heart, and our body linked, flowing freely in the Hun Yuan Chi. And bringing our hands together, sliding up with the elbows close in, Opening through the shoulder joint and bringing the chi back down in this different kind of pattern. Another time sliding up through the center column with our hands together, elbows close. Once the hands are up, then rotating the shoulders and palms and coming down backward in the back space. And one more time, circulating the chi around through us and the world. And into our bellies. Our feet, our bodies. Our prayers. Thank you. How la, how la. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So smile into your shoulders. You know, if you have some tiger balm or something like that, you might want to love into your shoulders for a, a minute now. Um, just because we, we were tender, but we did a lot with our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And it might be really, it might serve well to give yourself a little massage and maybe some, something like tiger balm or something. <laughs> 